welcome back to another video. So today in this video we're going to have a little bit of fun and we are going to color some flowers in Johanna Basford's World of Flowers. As many of you know this is my absolute favorite coloring book in the entire world. <laughs> And I have not brought this coloring book out in the longest time. So many of you have been asking me for color combinations. And so I thought it would be a ton of fun if I put together some color combinations with y'all in this video. And we colored some flowers with those colored combinations. And I'm going to try to stick to just three colors specifically for those of you that are beginners. Because I want to be able to show you that you can color a flower with just three colors. Sometimes you can color a flower with just two colors. <laughs> it really all depends on how big the flower is and the look you're trying to accomplish on your coloring page. If you check the description box down below, I'll have everything down there that you see me use in this video, as well as links to my email list, my Etsy shop, my Facebook group, and my Patreon if you'd like to support me there. I also now have channel membership. You can find more information out about that by clicking the join button down below the video. So as you can see, we are going to be using Prismacolors today. And I like to use Prismacolors because I feel like that is the set that most of us tend to have. This is the page we're gonna be working on. I have so many pages in this book that I've already done tutorials on, so I wanted to find a page that was wide open with flowers. But these three right here are all right next to each other, and so I thought they would be perfect for this tutorial because we can color them all different colors and see how they look once they all come together. We're gonna try to just put together some color combinations and see what we could do with these beautiful flowers. Okay, so these are gonna be some super fun color combinations because I am not trying to stay within the same color family. <laughs> we are going to be really creative this time. If you are a beginner and you're watching this video, I don't want you to be intimidated by the colors I'm choosing. I would like for you to just follow along and try these color combinations out because practice is the only way that you can learn. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take all three of these color combinations and I'm gonna swatch them out here on the Spring Hill paper. For this one, I have a light blue and then I'm gonna mix a shade of blue-green in the center and then my darkest color is going to be a blue. And even the darkest blue that I'm using is not super, super dark. So we're gonna see what we could do with it. If I do have to bring in another color, just to show you how to add a lot of extra depth in the dimension, I will certainly do that. But I'm gonna to try to stick to the three colors and see what I can create. But my first color is the Skylight Blue, which is one of my favorites. And I'm going to swatch all of these colors out here on the Spring Hill paper. And then I'm gonna show you how I would use them to color in the flowers. This is Light Aqua. And then my darkest color is Cerulean Blue. Let's go ahead and add a little bit more of the Light Aqua. And then our Sky Blue Light. But we're going to see what we could do with this color combination on the flower and see how much depth and dimension we can bring to the flower without adding even a darker color. We'll see what happens. So the next color combination I have is a little bit different. I have my salmon pink and then for the mid-tone I have hot pink. Oh these pencils are so so small. <laughs> They're almost hard to color with. And then the next color I chose was Mulberry. Mulberry always looks beautiful with the hot pink, but I think that one should be dark enough for us just to use three colors. But the contrast between these two colors is beautiful. And then I have another super fun color combination. This one is Neon Yellow. I had to pull this color out today because I really want to add a pop to one of these flowers. So I have the neon yellow. Then for my mid-tone, I have sunburst yellow. Look how pretty those two look together. And then we're gonna go a little bit darker with poppy red, but I think that's gonna be super pretty on a flower. And I think what I'm gonna do is I am going to do the blue flower right in the center. And then I'm gonna do these two color combinations on the outer two flowers. So I think we're gonna start on the outside and then we'll go this direction. And I'm gonna start with the mulberry, the salmon pink, and the hot pink. Now if you've watched my videos before coloring flowers, you know that I always like to lay down my highlight color first just to preserve the area that I want to keep the most highlighted. And then I'm going to come back with my mid-tone, which is the hot pink. That was the salmon pink. 
And now I'm gonna blend the hot pink right into that color. I'm gonna do the same thing on this petal, and I'm just gonna go all around the flower and do the same thing on all of these petals. And what I'm gonna do with these outer edges that are going around the flower as if they were a border, I'm going to ignore those. So my darkest color, which is mulberry, is going to end up being mostly on that outer edge. So this is the mulberry and I'm pulling it down just a little bit into that other color. I'm just gonna pretend like those lines aren't there. I think most people when they're coloring, they tend to think that just because those lines are there and a lot of Johanna's flowers, that you need to stay in the lines and color that a whole separate color. I used to think that too, but I've come away from doing that and I really like how it turns out. And I'm just blending the hot pink right into the mulberry. And I'm gonna pull the hot pink down just a little bit further. This flower is rather small. Now I'm gonna come back with my salmon pink and I'm gonna blend this color into here. Now this color is pretty bright, but you do need to add that extra layer there and it really brightens it up. It's so pretty. Now I'm gonna come back with a second layer of my mulberry and I am pulling it down a little bit past that line. Oh my goodness, how bad I want to grab another color. <laughs> oh, I do this all the time. <laughs> but I am coloring this one a little bit different than I would normally color flowers. Always try new things when you're coloring. Don't always try to do the same exact thing that you always do. Change it up a little bit and experiment with your pencils. So I think I'm gonna pull this down just a little bit with the hot pink. I think that's really pretty. And then I won't have to grab another color. <laughs> so now I have my salmon pink and I'm just coming back with another layer. And I am going over the whole thing because these colors blended together look absolutely Absolutely beautiful. Now I'm gonna grab my mulberry and I'm gonna come in here and just go over this area right here just a little bit and this will help to add lots of extra depth and dimension now that I have all the colors laid where I want them but look at the difference and see you can totally do this with just three colors so wherever I have a petal looking as though it's laying over the other petal, that's where I'm gonna come in and lay this color. And it's gonna make such a difference. When you're using your colored pencils, you want to make sure you get enough layers down on the paper because that is the trick to using colored pencils, layering and layering and layering. So now I have my salmon pink again and I'm just going to blend that color out just a little bit and pull it in towards the center. And maybe a little bit of this here on the outside will look pretty. Oh, and it does. See what happens when you just experiment just a little bit. Now I'm gonna come back with the hot pink and I'm gonna brighten this up just a little bit more, adding another layer because I still see a lot of the white of the paper. Okay, so what are we gonna do with the center? So since I didn't wanna grab another color, I am going to use the mulberry to just straight color these in. And we could grab the salmon pink and color in that center. And then I'm just gonna give it a little bit of depth and dimension by going over those lines there. And that flower is done. Now at the end, I might come back and do a little bit something more. Those of you that have been watching my videos for quite some time, you most likely already know what that is. <laughs> if you know what that is, put it in the comments right now. <laughs> Okay, so I said that I wanted to do the orange and the pink on the outside and the blue in the center. So now we're gonna go to the blue. So remember now for this one, we had a light blue and then a darker blue and then I had an aqua. So the aqua is going to be in the center, but just like with the last flower, I'm gonna come in here and lay my highlight color. Now I'm gonna have a lot less room in this one for my darkest color because the flower is sort of laying behind all of these others, but I think it's gonna look really pretty when it's done. Now I have my aqua and I'm just blending some of this color right into that lightest color. Now that sky blue light is really light so it's kind of hard to see, probably really hard to see 
on the video. I like to lay the lightest color just because I want to make sure that I don't mistakenly go into that area where I want to keep the highlight. Now over here on this petal, I've got this flower laying over it. So I'm gonna put a lot more of my darkest color, which is cerulean blue over here. So I'm just laying a little bit of that light aqua. Now I have the cerulean blue and I am going to again just go over the top part of the flower and again maybe on this one I'll pull it down just a little bit more and then I'm going to go over the top here and I'm going to leave that open just in case I want to do what I did on the last flower and then I'm just going to create a little blend right here at the tip and again I've got this other flower laying over the top so I want to make it look that way but oh my gosh this color is so pretty. So over here on this one, because this flower again is laying over the top, I'm gonna cover a lot more of that space there. Now I have my light aqua again, and I'm going to pull this down here on the outer edge and go over this one more time. And I'm gonna do the same thing here, and now on this petal. When this flower here, there's a lot going on because we have this flower laying over this one, and so I'm trying not to totally get rid of my highlighted area because some of those darker colors, I'm trying to pull down just a little bit more. Now I have my sky blue light, and I'm just gonna go over all of the areas where I have that color, and this color is so light, it almost looks white. It is a gorgeous blue, though. This is actually one of my favorite colors in the Prismacolor set. So now I'm gonna come back with the Cerulean Blue. It looks like I need to add a little bit of this right in here because this petal here is laying over this one. And then I'm gonna come over here and do the same thing. Now make sure the tip of your pencil is quite sharp. I'm gonna do this for each petal and I'm gonna add just a little bit more right in here. And then I'm gonna come back over here and I'm gonna do the same thing. And I'm also adding a second layer here at the tip of this flower. And I'm gonna pull it down just a little bit. So now I have my light aqua again. And oh my goodness, y'all, I think this is going to be my favorite. I'm blending this right into the cerulean blue and I'm pulling it down quite a bit. And then I am going over the outer edge again. Now I'm coming down here and pulling this color out a bit as well and making a blend of those two colors. I'm gonna use harder pressure with my pencil and really come in here and get some of this color laid down. And then I want some right in here where it looks like this other flower is laying over this one. And then I'm gonna pull that color down here. I think that this is actually going to be my favorite out of these color combinations. So now all I'm doing is I'm just adding that second layer in there and I do need to pull this up just a little bit so that it doesn't look like a line. You don't ever want your colored pencils to look like they're just a straight line. You want to blend them out and pull them inward towards the petal or whatever it is you're coloring. So now I have my skylight blue again and I'm using a little bit harder pressure and I'm coming in and just burnishing all these colors together. I'm going to use my darkest color to come in and straight color these and try to cover a lot of that line art. And then we used the lightest color in the center. And that's our second color combination. Look how pretty that is. Oh my gosh, I love it. Y'all know I love blue though. So now we're gonna work on our third flower. And this one is neon yellow, sunburst yellow, and poppy red. So I'm gonna color this one just like I colored the other ones. And I'm gonna lay my highlight color down in here. Oh, I know what I forgot on the other flower. I went and added a little bit of that extra dimension right there with that little line with the darkest color. Maybe I'll just leave it alone and not do that on this one. Now I'm gonna add my sunburst yellow. This is one of my favorite orange. Oranges. It does have a lot more yellow in it than orange, but it's just such a beautiful color. Now I have my poppy red, and y'all know I usually go much darker than this. Like the poppy red is probably a color I would normally use for a mid-tone, and then I would come in with something much, much darker. So I am changing it up a little bit from what I would normally do. Most of these colors, like the mulberry and the cerulean blue, those are colors I would normally use as a mid-tone, but I'm using them here as my darkest color and they still look absolutely beautiful. So again, I'm just going over the outer edges and I'm pulling it down just a little bit into that sunburst yellow. Oh, this video has been so fun. I love how these are turning out. Now I have my sunburst yellow and like I did with the others, I'm gonna make a blend of these two colors as I come over the poppy red and finish off these edges. I'm pulling it into the petal of the flower just a little bit. Look how bright and gorgeous that color is. Oh my goodness. And that with the neon yellow, once I come back and light a 
another layer of that. This is going to be so pretty. Let's add a little bit more of this neon yellow in here. I'm going to pull it down a little bit further closer to the center of the flower. So I just sharpened my poppy red and I'm going to do the same thing here. Wherever I have one petal laying over the other, I am going to add a little bit of color in there and then of course I'm going to come back and blend it out with my mid-tone. Doing this makes such a big difference. And I'm trying to only put it right here where the petal is. I don't want to pull it down too much because I want to do the same thing here that I did with the others where I just color this in with the darkest color. Now I'm going to go over all the tips again and I want this fairly dark here. I am using harder pressure now with my pencil just to really get this color down here. And now I'm coming back with my sunburst yellow and blending some of these colors out. I'm going to pull this down just a little bit more. I'm wondering with this one if I would have been better off with another color that is a little bit darker than this one. I'm not going to revert from what I said. <laughs> I'm going to stick to my goal here. <laughs> And I'm going to pull this down just a little bit more before I come back and add that neon yellow. Now I have the neon yellow and we are going to add this in here and really brighten this up. Oh my goodness. <laughs> the color is gorgeous. Really gives the flower the pop that it needs. Okay, so I think this one does need a little bit of extra depth and dimension. So I am going to do the same thing to this one that I did with this one over here. So now I'm going to come in and just color these in. And the center is going to be neon yellow. Oh my gosh, they are so pretty. Okay, if you were the one of the ones that guessed <laughs> stickles, you guessed right. So we're going to choose three different colors of stickles and we're going to add them to our flowers. I'm going to use a different color for each one and just put it right in the center and maybe a little bit on the outside. And already I'm looking at this color here, sea glass. So I'm going to pull that one and sunburst. Y'all know this is one of my favorite stickles. So we're going to use that on this one here. And then I think we're going to use orange slice on this one. I'm going to start over here and go this way so I don't get my hands in the stickles. <laughs> Now for those of you that don't have stickles, oh my goodness, you are missing out. They are so fun and they add a little bit of extra depth and dimension to your coloring pages, especially your flowers. I'm just going to dot that one right there. I'm just going to make a line with the stickles and go over that line that I had put there originally with the pencil. And it's just going to add a little bit of extra something to it. Oh, that is so pretty. If you lay your stickles somewhere where you really don't want them, you could always just take your finger and wipe them up. They do take a little while to dry. So now I have the sea glass and I'm going to use the sea glass the same way on the blue flower. Oh, how pretty. And I think I'm gonna do the same thing too. Actually, maybe I won't do it exactly the same. I'm just going to add like a little dot at the edge of each one because this one has a lot of covered space. Maybe I'll spread it out just a little bit. Yeah, that looks good. Oh, how pretty. And don't worry that it's going to get rid of what you just created with your colored pencils because it definitely does not. It lays right over it and you could still see your colored pencil work. They're wonderful. And then I have the sunburst and I'm going to do the same thing here. This is one of my absolute favorites. I love sunburst. I will always have the link down below in the description box for the cheapest place where you could get your stickles. So now I'm just laying it on top of this flower and I'm just kind of spreading it out. I'm not doing any of them exactly the same as I did one of the others. They all look a little bit different. And I don't really know which one I like best. I think I like the stickles on this one the best. But just to give you all a few different variations of how you can use your stickles. This one just has a little line of stickles. This one it's more spread out. And then this one I laid a whole lot more stickles. But that blue one is just gorgeous. I don't know. They're all pretty. I love every one of them. And I love how that neon yellow pops. So I hope you all enjoyed this video. I love sharing color combinations with you and I thought this one was really fun. It was a little bit of a twist on sharing color combinations, but these are some of my favorite color combinations for flowers and I hope that you love them. I always love mixing my pinks 
with that salmon pink that looks a lot more orange. It always comes out really beautiful. And I love using my sky blue light along with aqua just to really lighten it up and create a little bit of contrast. And I always love my neon colors. I use the neon pink all the time. I love my neon yellow. I probably use that one the absolute most, but I love the neon yellow because a lot of those neon colors in the Prisma color set, I didn't use them for the longest time. And then I started using them and I'm like, oh, what was I doing? <laughs> Why was I not using these? Because they make everything on your coloring pages pop and stand out so much more. But you could see that I was able to create these using just three colors and the stickles gave them a little bit extra depth and dimension. And like I said earlier, the colors that I use for the darkest colors are colors that I would have normally used for a mid-tone. And here I still created something beautiful with those colors, even though they weren't super dark, dark, dark. And I still have depth and dimension and they still really pop off the page. Everything that you've seen me use in this video will be linked in the description box below. I will have the link down there for the best place for y'all to buy stickles. But if you don't have stickles in your life, oh my gosh, stickles make everybody happy. A bling, 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 and more bling. <laughs> I hope y'all have a wonderful day and I will see you in the next video. Happy coloring. Bye.